Hello and welcome back to L8 Tutorials and Tips. My name is Alex Hughes and today we're going to continue on with our tutorial series. So in our first video we covered bringing a bit of stage in and we, we, uh, we ended with rotating that truss while having it as a layer. So today we're going to cover just static fixtures because there are some really cool features. Before we do that however we're going to rotate a truss back and get it set up. So we go back into layer, we grab T1 and if none of this makes sense, I suggest looking at the first video that we created. And we're just going to position this truss back where it was. And then we're going to pull it up a bit and then we're going to click two objects. We're going to save that as a layer. Let's jump into DMX. Let's add in a couple of profiles. So what we'll do is we'll grab every second light and we'll use the duplicate tool that we've got here and then we're going to change them for some fixed lights so like our moving head library we've got a lot of fixed lights that are available but today we just want something that's nice and simple like a source 4 and let's go with a source 4 5 degree maybe not a 5 degree that's a bit ridiculous we'll go for something like a 36 degree So with our, our 36 degrees here, we'll position them, we'll bring them over a bit and we're going to use our snap tool again. We can see that we can drag down and then snap up to meet it with the truss and we'll see the reason it's not mating is because I dragged them forward a bit. So if we rotate our camera around using our compass, we can then position our lights. Now with static lights, We've got a couple of different options in terms of rotation. We've got direction, which essentially moves the light, as you can see, in the actual yoke. And then we've got normal rotation, like we would with other fixtures. So we want to uh, rotate them around so they're kind of facing the wall. And then we want to use our directional tool to tilt them up, like so. Obviously, we've also got an output of our fixtures here. So we'll select the first one and we want to kind of, we want to kind of position them, but it's really hard. We want to do sort of like a consistent wash across this back wall. To do that, we're going to select all of them and we're going to use the hold function to do that, which is down the bottom. In previous versions, it was up here. Now it's moved, so we're going to click the hold function and what that will do is when we're in DMX mode, we'll see that all three lights turn on despite, or stay on, despite me uh, changing and not selecting them. So we'll, uh, we'll just position our three lights, accidentally take a screenshot, and we'll position them like so. So now we've got fairly decent coverage. We'll select them all again, turn off the hold function. We're going to address them by going to DMX input. And we're going to go to universe two and we're going to sign universe two as SACN universe two. Now with them plugged in here, we can do a couple of different things. Again, we can turn off the focus. We can use the frost if we want or we can tweak the, the zoom as well if we need to. We can also use the shutters in built in the fixtures and we get a preview of what they see as well. So we can shutter them down as we need to, rotate just as if we had shutters in them. Another feature that obviously most people would want is being able to put a color in front of them. So if we're doing theater, we can go into filter, we can go to fix gel and we can call up Lee, Apollo, TBS colors or even GAM we can select a filter so let's select a nice pale green and then we can also drop a gobo in and we can bring our own gobos in via the explore menu and just locating a png or we can use some of the ones that are located already in the system so let's go with these nice skull and crossbones and we can see that they're upside down so we'll rotate them using the rotate tool like so Let's drop the color out in the middle one just to be a bit different. So on top of doing fixed gels, we could also just do straight hue saturation or 
we can even put a scroller on them. So if we go load, we see that we've got a bunch of presets that we can modify, but then we can DMX control these as well. So here we see patch. If we patch this to channel four, and we clear out our saturation for a sec, then we select our scroller again, and we click apply this time, we can now patch it. So let's patch it as channel four, and we're going to click out of here, and we're going to click save. We're going to clear the program on our lighting desk now. And then we're going to bring up our lights. So we're going to do it inside of the desk here now. So we'll bring them up. And now we've got the output of them. If we had DMX control via the desk, I could actually grab one of the channels. So let's go to channel one. And we can manipulate the output that way as well. As desired. And it would be the same with the scroller. As a V60, we've also got one new feature that I want to cover that allows us to change the color of lights. So if I select all of these, we can make all our vipers gold and we can make all our uh, source fours silver obviously you can see when i pan away from the wall we lose the intensity that's because the material that we've used we've set the diffusion to that so if we pull that down we change it to brightness now we should get a better projection on that wall as well Now if we drop back into DMX mode, we can see we can control these lights via DMX. So we've got our first channel, and then we've got our second channel, which is our middle one, and our third, which we're controlling this off a lighting disc, so you may not see it, and then our fourth we could use for the scroller. which we may have to give a channel to. I think you have to select it. There we go, that's better. So when we've selected our scroller, we've also got a ticket. And now we can use that DMX channel that we assigned to flick through colors. So as I slowly wheel through, we can see the colors coming in and out. While we're here, we'll also deal with the elephant in the room, which is this big flashing update button. Major L8 updates uh, up to a certain point and fixture updates are all delivered inside of the application. So with an internet connection, when you load up the application and log in, you might see a flashing red button. If you click on that, it's gonna give you a preview of what's been updated. So as we can see, a bunch of Silver Star fixtures have been updated. And all we have to do to add these in is click download and it's gonna churn through. While it's churning through these, I'm going to quickly explain what all the different files are. So up the top, if you see this INF and PNG file, these normally indicate new gobos and they normally come with new fixtures. And then all the other files down below were just the fixture files. And now we've updated the fixture library as well. Application updates, any files that are found in the L8 folder can also be located there. Right before we finish off, I just want to go through a couple of the buttons at the top and the compass. So we've got a 2D mode where we can position fixtures as we want using the DMX module. So here we can see that we've got this 2D position thing so we can array them out in a nice little cheat sheet. We've got 3D where we were before. We've also got a paper view and the paper view serves one really good use. With fixtures selected we can actually see the absorption and we can see the lux of the fixtures. We've got a plot view and we've got a map. And the map is a new feature in VX60. With the map, 
we can color fixtures like so and we can also display some information up on the fixtures so we can see that we can add in their IDs their DMX addresses and also their names as required and we can export them out via the print tools that we've got here on the left we can also take out an Excel file so if we click export we're going to wait for Microsoft Excel to open and we're going to see a cheat sheet of all our fixtures that we've got so let's bring this up and here we can see all our fixtures we can make changes here such as addresses and then if we click back in here and we click import it's going to import it from Excel for us so if I clear out all my fixtures for a second let's say we remove all our Viper performances and then I check that I've got them in the file if we click import it's going to import them straight back into our show file and this uses the file that we've got open in L8 on the compass we've got a couple of different options we can control the room light we can go from full screen view to GUI mode we can change the ISO as required we can tweak the gamma smoke in the room wind exposure play with the field of view as required and again if we want to set these back to default we just right click on them and it'll default them back to their normal values we can use a bunch of predefined camera views as well we've got roll of the camera as desired and then we've also got some quality settings so if I reposition here for a second and come out of DMX mode and just bring the dimmer up on these fixtures from the lighting desk because we've got DMX plugged in we can see that we've got quite nice beams here but we can up that beam resolution if we've got more available or we can even tweak the lux that is the minimum amount so that we can get the best quality available depending on your version if you're using trace or unlimited we also have frame versions so you can use 3d glasses if you want the DMX control section has been covered in another video and that's how we do our DMX camera and on top of that we've also got the capacity to do some really nice predefined camera roll positions anyway that's L8 in, uh, in a basic form in a future video we're going to expand further on it if you've got any questions feel free to reach out there's a bunch of links available in the bottom of the video thank you for watching